Hi, uh, Jonathan York, Clay Financial Partners, uh, looking at the investment markets. Um, quite interesting at present, uh, you've got the international meeting in uh, Davos. Um, President Trump has just uh, delivered his speech, and again, sort of highlighting, you know, how great the U.S. is and how, uh, you know, his presidency has done this and done that, and really put uh, the U.S. on the sort of front foot, and really made it the, uh, the economic superpower in the world. Now, while some of that is true, certainly the U.S. is the strongest economy and the largest economy. Um, you know, again, the, uh, the speech was the usual sort of mix of sort of facts and then really some sort of alternative facts that just seem to be plucked out of midair um, that Trump just seems to be uh, sort of delivering and expecting people to believe. What is certainly true is that uh, you know the U.S. economy, um, since he uh, took over the presidency uh, back in uh, 2017, um, uh, the U.S. stock market has risen considerably. Um, you've got record low unemployment. You've got uh, pretty low inflation as well. And at present, you've got fundamentals that really appear to point to sort of uh, markets continuing to increase. Um, earnings coming through from most of the U.S. corporates so far have been pretty good, um, especially in the banking sector. Now obviously this has been helped uh, by the uh, US-China trade deal, uh, sort of phase one. Um, it will be very interesting to see uh, what sort of shape phase two make, takes. Um, you know, that's probably unlikely to be signed before uh, the presidential elections in uh, November of this year. And just interesting, as President Trump was lauding how great the U.S. economy is, um, the IMF has just downgraded their growth slightly for, for this coming year. Now, obviously, it is an election year this uh, year in the U.S., and it's just going to be very interesting to see how it all sort of plays through. First primer will be uh, New Hampshire on uh, the 11th of uh, February. And uh, what's really quite interesting from the Democratic perspective is that, um, you know, Mike Bloomberg, who threw his hat into the ring late, um, most sort of polls still uh, appear to sort of say that he is the person most likely to uh, push President Trump and defeat President Trump. But yet in the actual polling within the Democratic Party, he is way off the, uh, off the pace. Also as well, uh, President Trump obviously having to deal with the, uh, the impeachment trial. Um, that's going to be pretty interesting to see how he does sort of play through because certainly uh, the Republicans do have the majority in the Senate and so it's very unlikely that the Senate will pass the impeachment. And that is supply fresh allegations coming through now, which again sort of uh, raises some pretty interesting questions. Um, certainly Rudy, Giud Rudy Giuliani had uh, quite a few meetings in the Ukraine, and some of these meetings appeared to imply that there was certainly a, a quid pro quo um, sort of arrangement um, in terms of information and uh, then sort of uh, aid going forward. And obviously a key point in the presidential election and really global um, sort of politics for the next coming year will be uh, climate change. And again, just going to be very interesting to see the exchanges taking place at Davos on uh, climate change and climate change policy going forward.
and sort of related to that, oil's had another little spike there as uh, some of the Libyan uh, um, pipelines are sort of go offline. That's just caused a little bit of a spike in, uh, in oil prices. In the UK, relatively sort of quiet on Brexit. It's all sort of moving along at a reasonable sort of pace. Interesting, the Bank of England came out and sort of uh, really sort of pointed to the possibility of a rate cut. Um, that took a little bit of strength out of sterling. But once we see Brexit at the end of this month, uh, we should have a clearer picture then of uh, the sort of policies going forward and how the UK economy will be shaped post-Brexit. Here in New Zealand, the economy is still sort of pushing on at a pretty reasonable rate. Um, sort of key issues really appear to be back on that sort of housing front. Um, house prices increasing, rental demand, certainly in Wellington is getting really pretty, uh, pretty dire. Um, it's just going to be very interesting to see, uh, you know, how the government can sort of try and uh, uh, sort of impact on this uh, sort of housing shortage. Because clearly, you know, the sort of key uh, cornerstone policy of Kiwi World has been, uh, you know, a, a, a pretty big failure. Um, but, you know, they haven't, well, certainly they haven't built enough houses for what they said they were going to build. And the houses that they have be built, they haven't been able to sell. And then all the time in the background, you've got more and more housing uh, um, demand coming through with less and less supply. And when you add to that uh, sort of the low uh, interest rate environment as well, uh, you know, it really is, uh, it's, re it's getting pretty dire on the sort of housing front. Right here in New Zealand as well, you know, so long following the sort of global trend, um, you know, equities are sort of pushing on at a pretty good rate. We have low bond uh, returns. And so for investors looking for income, you know, it really is pretty tough out there. But if you are looking for income options, you know, there are alternatives available. You can call us on 0800-867-323 or go to the website www.bayfinancialpartners.co.nz for lots of interesting articles. And we look forward to speaking to you soon.